In this video, we will learn about Horner's syndrome. It is a group of signs and symptoms arising due to disruption in the sympathetic nervous system to one half of the face. It indicates the presence of an underlying issue. It itself is not a disease. Now, when an animal attacks you, remember, uh, we will be scared, right? Whenever uh, when we face a sudden danger, what happens is our sympathetic nervous system is activated. So, when we face a sudden stress, we either fight against the stress or we run away from there, which is called as fight or flight response. So, when sympathetic nervous system is activated, in the eye we see some changes like the pupils will dilate here the pupils will dilate so that more light enters into the eye and we start sweating okay because we are scared now and eye, your eyelids will widen okay so these are the three changes what we see in the eye when sympathetic nervous system is activated okay pupils will dilate we start sweating and eyelids will widen so now we will see in Horner's syndrome what happens is the sympathetic nervous system to one half of the face is affected so, when sympathetic nervous system supply to one half of the face is defective, the group of signs and symptoms arising because of this disruption, we call it as Horner's syndrome. Horner's syndrome is also known as oculosympathetic palsy, meaning the sympathetic fibers to the eye is paralyzed. That is what is the meaning of oculosympathetic palsy or paralysis. The, we see a classical uh, sign, okay, it's a triad, triad meaning three classical signs they are meiosis anhydrosis and ptosis you can remember the mnemonic map okay meiosis anhydrosis and ptosis we'll see individually what is all this okay as i mentioned normally our pupils will dilate we start sweating and eyelids will widen whenever the sympathetic nervous system is activated now it is disrupted so what will happen is pupils will go for constriction which is called meiosis there is absence of sweating on one side of the face which is called anhydrosis and your upper eyelid instead of opening more it will be drooping which is called as ptosis drooping up of upper eyelid is called as ptosis now individually we will see each of these symptoms okay why meiosis so you can see here two eye and this is the size of our uh, uh, pupil okay which will be equal on both the sides now each eye each iris okay is made up of two muscles uh, radial muscles and sphincter muscles sympathetic nervous system supplies radial muscles parasympathetic nervous system supplies sphincter muscles so now if you can see here radial muscle arrangement whenever the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated there is contraction of radial fibers or radially arranged muscles what will happen is our pupils will this is a gap right pupil pupil will dilate when parasympathetic nervous system is activated, there is a contraction of the circularly arranged muscles that is nothing but sphincter uh, pupillae muscle. So, when this muscle constricts, what happens is our pupil will become smaller in size. So, in normal individual, what happens is there is a balance between sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. So, there is a uh, balance is maintained between these two muscles so a normal size pupil is maintained but in Horner's syndrome what has happened there is a disruption of the sympathetic nervous system so on the eye on which side it is affected what happens is only there is an unopposed action of the parasympathetic nervous system so there is a, a spin constriction of sphincter muscles so pupil will go for constriction which is called meiosis meiosis is nothing but constricted pupil now uh, if you uh, see an individual, just imagine one eye pupil size is normal. On the affected side, the pupil size is very small. So, there is a uh, variation in the size of the pupil on two sides, you know, uh, on both the sides, right? So, that's why we call it as aniso, which is termed as anisocoria. Anhydrosis meaning there is uh, absence of sweating, right? Normally, sweat glands are supplied by sympathetic nervous system. And the neurotransmitter involved in sympathetic nervous system is uh, norepinephrine. More commonly, it is norepinephrine, right, in, uh, throughout the body. But the nerves, the sympathetic nerves which supply the sweat glands, so they release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. That is why these sympathetic fibers are called as cholinergic sympathetic nerve fibers. And this cholinergic sympathetic nerve fibers is what is disrupted in Horner's syndrome, okay, and that reduces the sweat formation, which is called as anhydrosis. 
moving on to ptosis ptosis is nothing but drooping of the upper eyelid so now we will see in the upper eyelid what are the muscles and how what are the nerves apply to them upper eyelid has two muscles the main muscle or the primary muscle is levator palpebrae superioris muscle and this is the primary muscle responsible for lifting our upper eyelid meaning the opening the uh, upper eyelid is mainly because of contraction of levator palpebrae superioris muscle which is supplied by oculomotor nerve your third cranial nerve but there is another muscle which is called superior tarsal muscle also called as muller's muscle okay and this muscle is supplied by sympathetic nerve fibers yeah the superior tarsal muscle it will assist the levator palpebrae superioris muscle in maintaining the upper eyelid in an open position now the nerve supply sympathetic nerve fibers comes from the superior cervical ganglion when these nerve fibers are disrupted to this muller's muscle what will happen is there is paralysis of the muller's muscle and remember these sympathetic nerve fibers they travel along the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve has three branches right one is ophthalmic division uh, maxillary division and mandibular division in the ophthalmic division the sympathetic nerve fibers travel and they come and supply the muller's muscle so whenever there is a disruption to the sympathetic nerve fibers muller's muscles are paralyzed so eyelid can be opened because the primary muscle is intact levator palpebrae superioris but the assisted help by the muller's muscle is not there because of disruption of sympathetic nerve fibers that is why there is a slight drooping of upper eyelid which is called as ptosis I think hope you guys are clear now. There is meiosis, there is ptosis, and anhydrosis, reduced sweat formation. Other than these three classical signs, sometimes there are some associated signs. That is nothing. One of them is inophthalmos. Inophthalmos meaning uh, opposite of exophthalmos. Uh, exophthalmos meaning your eyeball is coming out. Inophthalmos meaning you, it feels like your eyeball has gone inside, or it gives a sunken appearance of the affected eye or shrunken appearance of an affected eye. Why this inophthalmos happens? Because when sympathetic nervous system is disrupted, remember the muscles. tone to the structure surrounding the eyes reduce whenever the muscle tone is less it will give a sunken appearance and in long standing or severe cases of horner syndrome there can be muscle atrophy in the structure surrounding the eye and also there is loss of fat in the eye the orbital fat is lost over a long run because of all this uh, combinedly it gives a sunken appearance which is called inophthalmos another sign which can be seen are is called loss of ciliospinal reflex first we'll see what is ciliospinal reflex okay when you stimulate the skin on the neck or face what happens is there is a dilation of pupil on the same side which is called as ciliospinal reflex now remember you are touching the one side of the neck or face the skin is stimulated you can pinch or you can rub the say the pupil uh, what happens is the pupil will go for dilation now when you touch the skin sympathetic nervous system is activated that will cause your pupil to undergo dilation okay but in horner syndrome now what is happening your sympathetic nervous system is disrupted that is why there is no dilation dilation of the pupil is called midriasis okay so it is opposite of meiosis meiosis meaning constriction of the pupil midriasis meaning dilation of the pupil so in horner syndrome there is absent ciliospinal reflex so this will just help person confirming the diagnosis of horner's syndrome so just to summarize now what all we learned okay uh, you can remember the mnemonic for a sample for horner's syndrome it yes, stands for the sympathetic nervous system disruption produces meiosis and hydrosis and ptosis along with that additional associated signs can be loss of ciliospinal reflex and inophthalmos